Hello everyone. For today's video, we will be talking about the Sacrament of Confirmation. Let's get started. So, let's take a step back. What is a sacrament? In general, what is a sacrament? Well, there are three parts to what a sacrament is. So a sacrament is a special sign given to us by Jesus Christ that gives us grace. So those three things. It's a special sign given to us by Jesus Christ that gives us grace. But a sacrament is a special kind of sign. We know different kinds of signs in today's world, but a sacrament is a special kind of sign. What do I mean by that? It does what it says it will do. It does what it says it will do. So with a sacrament, I know that God is really giving me a very special gift. What is that? His grace. Grace is power from God to do what is right. So the sacrament gives us grace. It does what it says it will do. It gives us grace. So remember, there are seven sacraments. You are going to be God willing receiving confirmation in the Holy Eucharist. But there are in total seven sacraments in the Catholic Church. So first of all, there are the sacraments of initiation, the ones you begin with. Baptism, confirmation, and the Eucharist. Then you have the sacraments of healing, the ones that take away sin so we can be again in a relationship with God. So for example, the sacrament of penance or reconciliation, where we go to confession and the anointing of the sick. So when we are sick and close to death, perhaps, we are reconciled with God, that this sacrament gives a special grace to become closer to God to wash away all of our sins from all of our life so we can be ready to go to heaven. And then the sacraments at the service of communion, the state of life, like your vocation, what do you do in life? So the sacrament of matrimony, when a man and a woman get together so they can love each other and they have children, or holy orders, where a man becomes a priest to serve God's people and the church. So the sacraments of initiation, again, these are baptism, confirmation, and the Holy Eucharist, they make you a full member of the Catholic Church. Why? Because baptism, it brings new life in Christ. So before then, we had original sin, right? And we had no life with Christ. But with baptism, that's washed away, and we have new life in Christ. Then the Eucharist, it nourishes us with the body and blood of Christ. It keeps us going on the journey towards heaven. And confirmation that it strengthens our new life with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. We'll be talking about that in a little bit. So when did God give us the sacrament of confirmation? Do you guys know? So after Jesus died, rose from the dead, and went with his body to heaven, the 12 apostles were praying with Jesus' mother, Mary. And they were asking God to send them the Holy Spirit. But, just so you know, the apostles locked the doors of the room because they were afraid of the people that would kill them who killed Jesus. They were afraid that just like that those same people killed Jesus, they would also kill them. So they were afraid, locked up in a room. But what happens? So at the day of Pentecost, that's when the Holy Spirit came. So flames of fire appeared on the heads of each apostle. So before the Holy Spirit came, the apostles were afraid. They were scared to die for Jesus. But after they received the Holy Spirit, they wanted to tell everyone about Jesus. The Holy Spirit made them not scared of anything, not even being afraid of dying for their faith. So very cool that the Holy Spirit gave them this strength, this courage to proclaim their faith, to share their faith with others. 
So, with confirmation, what are some signs of confirmation? So when we see it, we recognize it. So there's a few signs. So one, we have the chrism and the laying of hands. So the chrism, it's a sign of joy because we're being full of the Holy Spirit. And obviously when you're full of God, you're full of joy. It also brings you fullness because you have God himself and strength, strength to keep going on the journey towards heaven. Also, chrism is a sign that it cleanses us, that it cleanses away from sin, that keeps us away from sin, to draw us closer to God, and it heals us, and helps us to heal from those past wounds that sin has created, so we can start our relationship with God. And it's a sign of consecration, that means that it's set apart, it's holy, so when chrism is placed on us, it symbolizes all those things. And for the laying on the hands, they're calling down the Holy Spirit. So when the bishop does the laying on of hands, he's calling down on the Holy Spirit to come upon you. These are just two of the signs of confirmation. But there's another one. The sign of peace. Why? Because the sign of peace ends the rite of the sacrament. So you know that the moment that confirmation is finished, the moment that the sacrament is done being given to you, it's when the sign of peace happens. And it shows the union that we have as a church with the bishop and with all the people. It shows that we're all together as one church. We are with the bishop and we are all together with the people. So let's go back to the anointing with chrism. Okay, that was the first sign of confirmation. So, the sacrament of confirmation is given, is conferred, through the anointing with chrism on the forehead, which is done by the laying on of the hand and through the words, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. So the sacrament of confirmation is given to you by the anointing with chrism. On your forehead so the bishop makes the sign of the cross over your forehead and he says the words be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit that's when the moment of confirmation takes place that's when the Holy Spirit is coming down so what happens to you so when you receive confirmation what happens to you are you the same are you different what's going on so the same Holy Spirit that came to the apostles will come to you as well. At confirmation, we receive the same Holy Spirit that came to the apostles, filling us with His Spirit and His grace. So the very same Holy Spirit that came to them also comes to us. No difference. So, to put it all together, what is the Sacrament of Confirmation? It's the sacrament by which all who are baptized now receive the seal of the Holy Spirit. You might be wondering, the seal? What is that, sister? So, did you know that at your confirmation, you will receive a special mark on your soul? Now, why is that? So, to help explain it, Animals sometimes have a letter that's burned into their skin to show who they belong to. So this cow belongs to this person or belongs to that person because of that letter. So in a somewhat similar way, at your confirmation, when the priest makes the sign of the cross on your forehead with the holy oil, with the chrism, a mark is made on your soul that cannot be erased. This mark will be on your soul forever in heaven or even in hell. It shows that you are a child of God. So at confirmation, you receive this mark on your soul and it stays there forever. Whether you go to heaven or hell because it shows that you receive the sacrament and it does a permanent mark on your soul that you are a child of God. So. This seal of the Holy Spirit that we receive, 
you receive it at confirmation, right? When you're anointed at confirmation, you receive the seal of the Holy Spirit on your soul. And it marks you as totally belonging to Christ. That you are totally Jesus. You totally belong to Jesus. You're also at his service, that you want to serve him. And it's a promise that he's going to help you at any moment, any day. So it's a promise of his divine protection. So he'll always be with you. So you belong to Jesus Christ. With this seal, it means that you belong to Jesus. So, apart from that, what does the grace of confirmation do for you? Well, let me tell you, it does quite a few things for you. So it increases and deepens the grace we received at baptism. So you already have grace that you first received at baptism, but at confirmation, it makes it even more so. You have even more grace. Also, it unites us more firmly to Christ. It increases the gifts of the Holy Spirit in us. Also, it increases our union with the whole church. We are more united to the Catholic Church. It gives us a special strength of the Holy Spirit to spread and defend the faith. So at confirmation, we also receive that gift that we are not afraid to share our faith and defend it to other people. And we are never ashamed of Jesus or the cross. So also that's a grace of confirmation that the Holy Spirit gives us to not be ashamed to talk about Jesus, to make the sign of the cross in public. All those things the grace of confirmation does for you. Again, Jesus told the apostles this, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes to you and you shall be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. So at confirmation, you receive this huge gift. So you will be the witnesses of Jesus Christ to everybody. Also, if that's not enough, at your confirmation, you will also receive the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. Now, what gifts are those? They are the gifts of wisdom, knowledge, understanding, fortitude, fear of the Lord, counsel, and piety. These are the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit that you will also receive at your confirmation. So, let's go briefly through these gifts. So, the gift of wisdom, what is that? It helps us to correctly judge things that are supernatural and to more deeply know it. So that means that we are able to judge things correctly, things that have to do about God, things that are supernatural, and we come to know more about it. So for example, the existence of God. You could learn the ways of how God exists, the reasons why God exists, but then you could also more deeply know it, right? So the gift of wisdom helps us with that, to, under, to more correctly judge things to correctly judge things that are supernatural and more deeply know it, okay? Then the gift of understanding. So this gift helps us understand the meaning of the teachings of the church. Perhaps we can memorize the Ten Commandments, the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. So that's okay, memorizing it. But another thing is that you understand it. You understand what you're learning, what you're coming to know about, right? So this gift helps you with that. To understand really the meaning of the teachings of the church, the why. Alright, the gift of counsel. It helps us to judge what to do in any situation. So if you're stuck in a sticky situation, what do you do then? Or if somebody asks you for advice, the Holy Spirit will be, will be able to help you to make the right choice, right? So this gift of counsel helps us to judge what to do in any situation. That whatever leads us closer to God. The gift of fortitude. That's that one. 
It is the courage to stand up for what is right. It gives us strength to do good and avoid evil, even when it's difficult or even dangerous, because we know that we will go to heaven. So it's the courage to stand up for what is right, even if it's difficult. Okay? So the gift of fortitude helps us to do that. The gift of knowledge. It helps us to judge things in such a way that we choose what will lead us to heaven. So it's kind of similar to one of the other gifts. But this one, when we are confronted with something, when we have a choice about something, we will know how to choose it because it will lead us closer to heaven. So this that I'm deciding on, will this lead me closer to heaven? Will it lead me closer to heaven? And then that's how you know. So the gift of knowledge helps us to choose that correct thing that will lead us closer to heaven. And if it doesn't, you turn away, you move away. The gift of piety. So this gift helps us to love God like our own dad and that we worship God. We worship him as our father. And it helps us to love all people even the people who are mean to us because they are also children of God. So this gift of piety helps to love God like our own father and to love others because they are also children of God. And lastly, the gift of the fear of God. Now this doesn't mean that we're afraid of God, no. But this gift helps us to love God so much that we never want to do anything that will make him sad. So that's what it is. We love him so much that we wouldn't dare to choose to do anything that will make him sad. So, if you haven't guessed it yet, the seven gifts make you holy. And how do they make you holy? They help you to listen and to follow what the Holy Spirit asks you to do in your life. But you might be wondering to yourself, how do I know what the Holy Spirit is asking me to do? How does he tell me? How do I know? What do you think? We need to learn how to be silent. God speaks to us often, very often actually. He speaks to us very often, but we need to learn how to be silent. We need to learn how to be silent. Especially at Mass, or when I pray at home at night. It's very hard to listen to God if there's a lot of noise. It's hard to listen to God if I have my earplugs on, if I'm watching TV, if I am running around the block. It's hard to listen to God if I'm not silent. So, it's helpful, it's good, if you can try to keep your body still silent. It helps if you try not to move around so much, like you're quieting your body so that we are getting ready to talk to God and to listen to Him. But, I know this has happened to us, even if my body is quiet, maybe my brain is not. I might be thinking about the movie I watched, or I could be thinking about sports. Or I could be thinking about my video games. So even though my body's quiet, maybe my brain is somewhere else. It's not yet focused on God. But when you really pray, when you really pray, you do your best to block out everything else. You try to focus on God. You try to focus on God's presence inside you. Of the grace that's inside you, present in you. You also try to focus on God's presence in the Eucharist at church. Because God is really there in the Eucharist at the church. He's present there. And then you can hear what the Holy Spirit wants you to do. Even if he doesn't use words. So maybe that one time you were mean to your brother or sister. Maybe the Holy Spirit is asking you to apologize to him or her. 
and to go to confession, to also apologize to God. So we're silent if we keep our bodies still and we focus our minds on God, we would be able to hear the Holy Spirit, what He wants us to do. So, one last thing. Are there some things I should do after confirmation? So when I receive confirmation, are there things I'm supposed to do? You bet. So continue living in the state of grace. So keep that state of grace, keep it pure, keep it there. Don't let it get out of your hands, keep it there. And how do you do that? You go to Mass every Sunday, you receive Holy Communion, you receive the Eucharist, and go to confession every two weeks. That will help you keep away from sin, to get back up on your feet and continue to living in the state of grace. Also keep learning about your faith. Don't think that with confirmation, you're all done. There's so much more, so much more that you can learn about your faith. You're never quite finished. There's so much more you can always learn about God. Also, defend and explain your faith to others. If somebody asks you about the faith, tell them about it. If somebody questions, tell them about it. And make sure that you pray every day every day that will help you so much and that will help you also to listen to what the holy spirit wants you to do pray every day and get involved maybe there are things that you can do at the church maybe it's some activities maybe you can do some volunteer work there's so many opportunities that it can help you to grow more and more in your catholic faith so i don't know about you guys but I say, let's get ready. Let's prepare to receive the sacraments of the Eucharist and Confirmation. So, let's try to make some time to be quiet inside and out. To keep that moment of prayer. And let's try to listen and do what God whispers us to do in our hearts. So, let's be saints. Thank you so much, everybody, and God bless you.